Hey guys, it's been an awfully long time since I've uh, had a chance to make a video and today's video is one that I've actually um, been wanting to make for quite a while and also an experiment that I've wanted to do for quite a while and that has to do with um, ceramic EEPROMs so those of you who watched my video about uh, exploring the crypts and, and picking up uh, lots of good e-waste would have seen that I've, I had boxes and boxes of ceramic EEPROMs that came out of that and yeah so today we're going to find out what the gold value of a decent uh, gold center ceramic EEPROM is so I'll just quickly run over the steps and um, that I'm going to do probably won't show that much of the chemistry because it's not very exciting stuff but then in the end of the day we should be able to say what the actual gold value of each individual ceramic EEPROM is so you start off with uh, something that looks like this not actually exactly like these because unfortunately I already went through and processed all of my good ones but when I when you look at the um, at the die really you want to see kind of solid gold inside the die these ones have like a, a silver base and they, they do have a little bit of gold in the in the braze but not quite as dark and deep as some of the other ones I'll show you but essentially the first step is um, get yourself a small little hammer and a, and a small little anvil or, or some kind of solid uh, surface to work on you basically just hold the hold it hold the chip on, uh, um, on its side sitting on the on the on the metal object or anvil in my case and tap it fairly hard all along the edge and what happens is the whole thing splits apart the top and the legs actually separate from the base and the base is really the only bit we want uh, in terms of the gold recovery for these so through the magic of TV there's a bunch that I, that I did before and if you look at ones like this you'll see what I mean about the um, the deep gold on the the kind of the plating that the die is soldered to and you'll also see that the benefit of, of doing the tapping rather than just uh, throwing the not kind of carrying on just with the ICs as is and, and maybe just crushing them is at this point you have no unwanted base metals in them see there's a few the, few, the legs kind of come off like that there's a couple that snuck through as you can see there the, the legs kind of come off quite cleanly and the other thing is you've more than doubled your yield per the amount of material because you've got rid of the, the top cap got rid of this top cap as well as all the legs and stuff from that so um, so the yield goes up for the amount of so which basically just means that the amount of acid you need to use goes down so um, basically yeah so what I what I actually did is I picked out one kilogram of mixed mixed long ones and short ones but I chose only the ones that had kind of a good gold center like that which is why you see quite a lot of the not so good ones here you can see there's a little bit of gold on that one but not doesn't look the same as that uh, so I picked out a kilogram of those and I just quickly counted up how many individual ones of these it takes to make a kilogram and it takes 263 of these um, which means that later on we can work out exactly what the gold content per IC is so then the next step I did is I, I took the took these and I just put them into my crushing ball mill which features on quite a lot of other videos so I won't go over that and um, through the magic of television that's what they look like um, after I don't know like that's a kilogram of a kilogram of them broken up and it's you know I don't know a few hours so they don't actually take that long to break up and one of the nice things is um, they, they tend to break in the center first because obviously that's where they're the weakest and so the, the reason we actually do this in terms of breaking them up is so that the the problem with these ones and especially the ones with a bigger die like that one is if you just put this straight in the acid which you definitely could do it takes a very long time for the acid to actually dig underneath the the non-reactive dye to get all the gold out and separate off all the dyes if you're actually able to to break them up fairly easily without having to do it manually then it's much quicker for the gold to actually for the acid to actually get to all the gold and if you take a little piece like this just kind of wipe it off you can see there's a little bit of gold on the side there so all of these pieces basically just are like that so they're just little broken bits there's obviously a lot in there that doesn't have any gold on it but that's kind of hard to filter out but yeah so that's 263 of those uh, 263 of those bases 
that have been through the ball mill. So if we just bring up a little bit of paper here that I've, I've kind of uh, just written down all the steps for those of you who might follow a, a stepwise thing a little bit better. So you'll see um, separate the gold braze bottoms by tapping on the side with a small hammer. Um, crush those bottoms in the ball mill to allow chemical access to the gold. Then I'm going to take this material and cover, um, add, add hydrochloric acid until it's covered it by maybe a hundred milliliters or so. Um, it actually won't take very much hydrochloric acid because um, the material is fairly uh, well packed in there. So it's, it actually works out quite nice in terms of acid use. Then I'm going to heat all of that to about 75 degrees Celsius on my fume hood and when it gets there I'm going to add about 10 milliliters of nitric acid. 10 milliliters of nitric acid is far far too much for the amount of gold we're going to get out of here. I'm hoping for maybe a gram or two best case scenario. Um, so, so the reason you kind of put way too much uh, nitric acid in and you can actually add all 10 mil pretty much at once is just so that the reaction happens quickest. Even then I'm going to leave that for many hours to just sit there um, because it's almost like a leech, like it still takes a bit of time for the um, for the acid to get underneath uh, the little bits of dyes that's left, so you just leave it sitting there, it doesn't, you know, it can, it can sit there quite happily for four or five hours um, before I'll, I'll bother to, to carry on. Okay, then I'm going to vacuum filter all that material to recover the pregnant liquid and I'm going to wash the, the leftover bits of ceramic with additional clean water uh, probably a couple of times to, to get as much of the pregnant acid out of it as I can. At that point uh, this stuff is actually fairly safe to dispose because it's very inert um, and if you've washed it relatively well it does absolutely nothing. It's basically bits of sand, bits of rock. Okay, then uh, so I end up with a beaker of this pregnant liquid and what I always tend to do next is instead of trying to precipitate the gold from that beaker, I always at this point cement any precious metals in the solution onto a copper bar at a, and I usually heat it to around 50 degrees Celsius or so to do this. The, the reason I do this is because there is still quite an excess of nitric acid present and cementing on a copper bar it kind of takes care of that problem at the same time as cementing out all the gold and then after a couple of hours when all the gold is out of solution I will just basically do a, a very simple re-refine uh, with aqua regia and precipitate with sodium metabisulfite. So I'll carry on and go and do a bit of that and then uh, later on we'll see what the yields kind of look like. Okay so we have that um we have those ceramic ICs broken up inside here and I've covered it with uh, hydrochloric acid and added about 100 milliliters of excess and see if I can get this light going, there we go. I also um, added about 5 milliliters of nitric acid and then gave it a little bit of a mix through, currently sitting at about 85 degrees Celsius in the fume hood and um, getting a surprisingly vigorous reaction. I'm actually quite happy to see that because Realistically, the more bubbles you see, the, the better, and that's actually more than I usually get when I'm processing um, kind of ceramic logic. So, you know, hoping for the best. Um, so far, so good. I'll um, catch up with you guys again a little bit later. This has only been going for a couple of minutes now, so this has got many hours left to sit here and simmer. Okay, guys, so it's been about uh, five hours since the last video, and... Um, I have vacuum filtered the material uh, from the IC from the ceramic EPROMs and uh, you can see the volume's gone up quite a bit because um, I used quite a bit of water to wash any excess acid out of the um, out of the EPROMs and so the next step is going to be pretty simple we're just going to transfer this to a beaker with a big uh, copper bus bar on it uh, heat mildly till about um, 50 degrees Celsius or thereabouts and just allow all of the uh, nitric acid to be consumed or to consume the, the copper. Uh, the excess nitric is, is going to still have probably at least 5 milliliters of excess nitric acid and after that has happened the gold will cement on the, uh, out on the copper and then we'll go for a quick re-refine. Okay. okay guys, so here we have the cementation step um, onto the copper bar that's in there. I'll just try and 
going to get the light to, to show you guys. Um, it's a bit of a war zone in there currently. Um, it's probably running at about 50 degrees or so, which is which is quite good. So the, the reaction happens relatively fast. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of bubbles happening. What's happening there is the um, the gold is cementing out on the copper, and the and then being redissolved into solution by the the still available nitric acid. And you can also see the the kind of yellowish tinge above the liquid there. That's the um, the nitrous oxide um, or NOx. And yeah, so that's going to go well. What's what is quite interesting is as soon as the excess nitric acid is completely consumed, this whole thing will go completely and utterly um, motionless. Like all the bubbles will disappear. There'll be no motion in it, and you'll know that it's it's basically complete. It's it's very obvious when the cementation step is done. So um, I'll let this continue, and uh, yeah, it should be probably going to be half an hour or so, and then this will be completely done. Hey guys, so. A bit of time has gone by for me, but I've got the results of those 263 um, ceramic EEPROM ICs. Not quite as much as I was hoping for, but I haven't weighed it up yet, so I um, guess let's, uh, let's see what's in there and see what these things are worth. Let's uh, grab the old lie detector. Set to grams, grains, grams, cool. This is a uh, year to date, not going quite as fast as I'd hoped, but uh, looking alright, at least there's something. So we'll zero that off, and let's get that stuff in there. Okay, so well, actually, before I do that, I should remember to. Uh, bypass the zero tracking of the scale. Let's see what we've got. Be nice if there's a gram or two. So we get rid of that and got a result of one point let's call it one point five eight grams. So that's not terrible. Um, one point five seven. Let's store that number. So let's do some quick, some quick live math here for you guys. Hopefully you can read that, and we'll get the calculator, which I'll need soon enough. So those 263 chips gave us uh, 1.57 grams of gold, and if we divide 1.57, well actually let's let's work out the um, the total dollar value first. It's going to make life a bit easier. So we'll use um, in my case uh, sixty dollars a gram. So 1.57 times sixty, so that is uh, New Zealand dollars ninety four dollars and twenty cents. And sorry, that's horrible. Ninety four dollars and twenty cents. And if we divide that by two sixty three. That means that each of those um, each of those ICs are worth uh, thirty six cents, so zero dollars and thirty six cents to me, which is um, definitely less than I'd hoped for. But to be honest, they're very easy to process. So um, you know, it is what it is. It's um, probably roughly the right amount for a good mix of ICs like I've got there. Um, in terms of what that means in gold is uh, 1.57 grams divided by 263 so there is about 6 milligrams of gold um, so uh, 6 milligrams of gold per each of those um, per each of those ceramic ICs those things there okay well thanks guys um, Hopefully that was useful if you if you come across a whole bunch of uh, ceramic ICs you've got some kind of idea what their value is and what you could pay for them and still make a bit of profit. Cool. See you guys next time.